Okay, guys, last review. Here we go. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. So I think this one should be pretty easy. We actually learned all this stuff in geometry as well. So our last review sheet is all about radicals and so or roots. And so let's go through this. So number one, um, I'm just looking for good multiples of 48 and 16 times 3 is the best. So I go square root of 16, square root of 3. We know the square root of 16 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12, so it's 12 square root of 3. Boom. You know how to do that. Um, number two is a cube root, and um, I'm going to leave the four here, but 125 has a perfect cube root. It's going to be five, um, and so I've got 125 times the cube root of two. I know the cube root of 125 is five. Five times four is 20, so I've got 20 times the cube root of two. Well, let me get a pen so I can highlight the answer. There you go. It always looks better. Do it in pink. There you go. There's that. There's that. Okay. Um, number three is a fourth root, so I'm going to go four. And I know a 16 is a perfect fourth, fourth root, so I'll go with fourth root of 16, fourth root of two, and then I can, I will take the a fourth of that exponent. I can't take a fourth of the nine, so I'll break it up into the y8, because I can take a fourth of that and the fourth root of y, okay? So I still have a y to the ninth, but I broke it up. Now, 4 through to 16 is 2, which makes 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to take a fourth of 8, which is x squared. I'll take a fourth of 8 here for the y to the 8th, and I'll get a y squared. What's left over is a fourth root of 2y. And that's all I can do, right? Circle that. Uh, 4. Um, I can't add them if they're not the same, but maybe if I do a little bit of reducing, um, they might become the same thing. So I'm going to keep the 3 out there. And then 50, I'll change into 25 times 2, because that's a perfect root. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Plus 4, and I've got then 18 will go 9 times 2, because 9 is a perfect root. I've got 3 times 4 is 12. Oop, oh, square root of 2. Uh, sorry. 15, square root of 2, my bad, plus 4 times 3 is 12, square root of 2. Now I can add them. 15 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 2 makes a 27 square root of 2. Okay, and that's, I can add them, and I did, and that's my answer, 27 square root of 2. Um, 5, okay, let's see if I can make these into perfect roots, okay? So let's see, that's going to be, 40 could be 8 and 5, because cube root of 8 is 2. Um, I think this one's 27, 5. So I get minus 5 times the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 5. So now I can take the cube root of 8, which is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Cube roots of 5 minus. Take, I can take the cube root of 27, which is 3. 3 times 5 is 15 cube roots of 5, and now I can actually subtract those and get a negative 7 cube roots of 5, and that's that, okay? All right now, 6. I'm just going to multiply. 4 times 3 is 12. Square root of 2 times square root of 6, square root of 12. Um, I, there's more I can do. I can break up this square root of 12. So I'll leave the whole number 12 out in front. Square root of 12 is square root of 4, square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 12 is 24 times the cube root of 3. Okay? Ah, uh, you guys should be good at this. We've done this a bunch of times. Uh, 7, we're just going to have to foil. So, all right, you ready? This times this. Whole number times whole number. I get an 8. Square root of 9. This times this. 2 squared is 3 times 2. Whole number is 2 times 2 is negative 4. Don't forget the square root of 3. This times this, whole numbers. 1 times 4 is a 4. Don't forget the square root of 3. And whole number, uh, 1 times negative 2 makes a negative 2. Okay, then I can simplify a little bit more. Square root of 9 is 3. I can go 8 times 3 is 24. These two, oh, they cancel each other out. I like that. And then I get minus 2. 24 minus 2 is 22. And that is my answer. No roots. They all canceled out. Select. Four, yeah, they do cancel out. What do you know? Okay, moving on to the back side. Um, all right, got to rationalize. So what I 
got to make sure and do is I can't have a squirt in the bottom. So I need to make the denominator into a perfect square. Well, 9 would work. So I multiply it by the square root of 3, square root of 3, rule of 1. Then in my denominator, I'll have a square root of 9, which of course, square root of 9 is 3. All right, I rationalize the denominator. But on the top, I'll say I'll have a 4 square root of 3. I can't do anything with 4 square root of 3, so I just leave it. Don't divide those 3s. That's not really a 3. A square root of 3, which is about a 1.7. 3, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I have rationalized it, okay? Um, number 9, I need to make this into perfect cube root, which is 27. I need to make this into a cube root of 27. So I multiply by the cube root of 3, cube root of 3, so that I can make the denominator into the cube root of 27, which, of course, the cube root of 27 is just 3. Okay, now the numerator, well, the numerator is just going to be a cube root of 6, and, of course, there's nothing you can do with the cube root of 6, so I keep it as the cube root of 6, okay? And that is my answer. Um, okay. Fourth root, well, 625, the fourth root is 625 is 5. So I'm going to multiply this one by the fourth root of 25 and the fourth root of 25. When I do that, I will get on the denominator, the fourth root of 625, but the fourth root of 625 is 5, okay? And then in the numerator, I will get a fourth root of a, 125, and there is no 4th root of 125. I can't break it down. can't do anything with it, so I'm just going to leave it as the 4th root of 125. Okay, so I rationalized the denominator. There's no longer a root in the denominator of any of these fractions. Okay, all right. Number 11, we're going to solve. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and first divide by 2. Divide by 2, I'll have a square root of a 2x plus 4. 5 equals 5. I'll square both sides. I'll have a 2x plus 5 equals 25. I'll have to solve minus 5 minus 5. 2x equals 20, right? 5 by 2, x is 10. Is that an okay answer? Yeah, that's an okay answer because we're not going to make any negative square roots. We're good. Okay, so let's, okay number 12. Uh, 12 is going to take a little bit of work, but we can do it. So, I square both sides, right? To get rid of the square root. And I square the side. x minus 1 squared really means x minus 1 times x minus 1. I've got to write it twice because I multiplied it times itself. And then the square cancels square it. I'm just left with x plus 1. All right, now let's see what I got. I'm going to foil this. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is negative 1x. 1 tech times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Still equals x plus 1. Okay, so what did I do? Well, I'm moving along. This can be combined. Negative 1x. Negative 1x makes a negative 2x. So I'll have an x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals x plus 1. Now, sure seems like I'm going to have to factor. So let's make it equal 0. So equal 0. All right, so I'm going to go minus x to get rid of it. Minus x. Minus 1, minus 1 to get rid of it, and then I'll have an answer of x squared minus 3x, gone, 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 equals 0. Okay, now, factor, right? Okay, I can factor that. You get an x, x minus 3, common factor, right? So for my mini equation, I get x equals 0 and x equals 3. But I don't think 0 is going to work, because if I try and check my 0, and plug my 0 back in here, if I take my 0 and check, I would have this. I'll do the check right next to it so you can see, okay? So let me do my check right here. So if I do my check, I'd have 0, 4x. 0 minus 1 equals the square root of 1. Uh, 0 plus 1. Negative 1 equals the square root of 1, which is 1. Negative 1 does not equal 1. It does not. Plus, I knew right here, once I put the 0 in, Right here, I knew you can't have a square root equal to a negative, so I throw out the 1, and the answer is just 3. So now let's take a look at the last one, 13 to graph. We're going to state domain range. Um, let's see, I'm going to graph. I like to graph the parent function first. I think it's better to do that. So let me grab a ruler. 
let's grab that parent function. Okay, I know it's everything's gotta be positive. Okay, so I'm just gonna graph like this. Okay, I need the parent function. Um, the parent function in purple. I'm gonna graph y equals x squared first. So, oh, squared of x, my bad. It's all good. All right, so squared of zero, zero. Squared of one is one. I'm gonna go four. One, two, three, four. Four over because the square root of four is two. I'm gonna go all the way to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because the square root of nine is three. And all the other numbers are in there, but they're just decimal answers. So I just took one, four, I took one, four, and nine because those numbers have square roots. Okay, now I'm just gonna translate this graph. So I'm gonna translate it. to the left two, remember see always opposite, left, left two, and I'm gonna go up three. So the entire graph goes left two, up three, and I'm gonna do the exact same graph. This graph's gonna be here, one, two, three, four, four, two, and three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, and there it is, and I'm off my paper, but that's okay, I'll just tape it on so it stays like that. Okay, that's all I have. Um, good luck tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, ask me, okay? Car Carson, did that help at all? Good.